Okay, I think today uh, we'll be discussing about uh, chapter two of the book in which we, uh, what is, that was introduced last week, which is about the uh, introduction to uh, GG plot two. And uh, for the learning objective, we are going to learn about the, the layered grammar of graphics, uh, which, is all, which is the API which uh, GG plot two uh, uses uh, to create uh, visualization in R. Uh, we are also going to learn about the key components of every every data graphics because every data graphics are using ggplot2. They are key components, and these components are broken down uh, into different layers. So, uh, part of this discussion will be going briefly into uh, all those layers uh, that are covered within uh, ggplot2. Uh, uh, firstly, before I proceed uh, with my talk, I would like to like talk about uh, the, the the grammar of graphics, uh, which is which was a book uh, that was lit, written with written by Elian uh, Wilkinson, uh, who wrote uh, the book. That, and this book mainly based on the concept in which every uh, every graphical package uh, they, they are based upon all these principles. And it was this same idea in which uh, Lillian Wilkinson published in his own book, in which the author of ggplot2, which is Harley, uh, Harley Wickham, he picked uh, this idea, he developed this idea and used it in implementing that as a standard in which uh, every data graphics have to follow in the R ecosystem. So uh, basically, Leland Wilkinson Grammar of Graphics that were first published, I think, in 1999, formalized two main principles in its plotting frameworks. So first of all, he talk about graphics, that every graphics, uh, they are using layers of uh, grammatical elements, and are also they have meaningful plots through aesthetics, uh, aesthetic mappings, because every plot we need to map they are linked mapping variables uh, to aesthetic properties. So essentially, so every graphics, uh, uh, there are essential graphical elements to create uh, any visualization uh, using the ggplot2. So the first thing we have to do uh, when visualization uh, with ggplot2, first of all, after initializing the ggplot function, we need, we need a data, we need to pass in our data set uh, to the ggplot2 function. So this data set in which we are, is not just any kind of data. Uh, the data needs to be a tidy data because in the, the Alpha Data Science book and the week we talk about uh, the tidy data. That is a data in which every column uh, is a variable. So every row is an observation and every cell uh, is a value. So those type of data that is being expected when we are want to create uh, any visualization using ggplot2. So after passing in the data, the next layer in which we we'll touch uh, using this ggplot2 API is the aesthetics. Uh, and the aesthetics simply mean the scale onto which we map our data. So that means we are linking variables uh, in which we can find in the data to the visual properties of the graph. So maybe we have a data set, we have this data set has different Variables and those variables that are the column header, we can say, okay, it goes to this GG, we tell ggplot2, can you grab this variable that can be found in the data? Can you map it uh, to the x axis? Can you pick this other variable? Can you map it to the y axis? Then there are some other aesthetic properties like that we can look at the color, we can look at the size, we can look at the shape, which we see in. A subsequent uh, discussion. So after these two layer, the next uh, thing we have to look at is the geometry, which uh, this geometry represent the visual element used for our data. So that means if the geometry mainly refer to the type of visualization in which uh, we want to create. Let's say, for example, we want to visualize a scatter plot. We know that the geometry is going to be uh, a jump point, a bar plot can either be a jump call or jump uh, Jumper. So the next uh, layer we'll look at is a facet. Facet means uh, plotting small multiples. So that we are plotting small multiples, we can be used to convey uh, our message in which we are trying to pass uh, to our audience. Then the next uh, layers 
which is the statistics. Statistics mainly represents representation of our data to aid understanding. So, so because every because every in ggplot2, every uh, default uh, geometry, there is all every geometry has always have a default uh, statistics. But these statistics, uh, in some points, we can override uh, these statistics uh, when uh, we are creating our plots. So the next uh, thing we look at the coordinates. This coordinate simply refers to the space on which the data will be plotted. So. But in a majority of the visualization, when we are working with ggplot2, it always plotted uh, using the, the, the Cartesian coordinate system. So, but there are several other coordinate systems which we can use when creating our visualization uh, using the ggplot2 API. So the last uh, is a team. The teams mainly re refer to all the non-data ink. Team mainly, we use the team to customize the look, the appearance of the of our visualization to make it uh, more attract, attractive to convey the message in which we are trying to pass to, to our audience. So I think that is basically what I have in this uh, introduction, but I don't know if there are any comments before I proceed. No real comments. I remember, like I hadn't realized before, like for the G for the geoms, like there's also like the stats that are like you can use them interchangeably. So it's something, yeah, that was something interesting. I only learned after, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Okay, so so the next uh, layer. The first layer we'll be discussing about in the ggplot2 is the data layer. So this is always the first layer. So here we are making use of this data, which is CPS85, which is from the package, the mosaic package. So I'll just use this function to, to load uh, the data. Uh, so the first uh, in every ggplot2, we need data so because in any visualization, we need data. Without data, we cannot say, uh, we can't create uh, any visualization. So we need data. And as I said earlier on, this data in which uh, we are using uh, for our visualization, it need to be, uh, it need to be a tidy data. It need to be a tidy data. So after uh, grabbing our data, we need to initialize it, our plotting. Uh, function we need to initialize the plotting using this uh, ggplot functions. So within this ggplot function, uh, we pass in uh, the data. So once we pass in the data to the ggplot function, we'll just see uh, this uh, gray canvas in our plotting window in our studio. So this means that uh, yes, we have passed in the data, but we have not mapped any variable from this data to the visual. Uh, properties of the plot. So we have not mapped any variables. So there is no aesthetic mapping. There is no geometry. So we are go just going to get uh, this uh, blank uh, canvas. So, but in the next part, we now proceed to the aesthetic uh, mapping. So the aesthetic mapping simply, what it means is that we are linking variables that we can find in the data to the aesthetic uh, properties of the plot. So within this aesthetic mapping, we are going to pick some variable that is in this data. We can map it to the x-axis. We pick another variable. We can map that variable uh, to the y-axis. We can also have another categorical variable. We can map it to either the color, the shape, the size, and also alpha, which, which help us to control the transparency of the plot in the, of the point, which we are showing in the visual. So, so once we, we have done this, once we have done this aesthetic mapping, so there are several other uh, aesthetics properties that we can see in the plots. We can also have shape. We can also have the size. We can also have the line type. We can also have the line width. We can also have the color. So these are all aesthetic properties in which we need to map. We can map all these variable, all these properties to any properties that can be found uh, in our data. So, if, so how do we how do we uh, how do we map this? First of all, I load the ggplot2 function. So I initialize the plotting window, calling the ggplot. 
So I pass in the data, which is CPS 85. So for the mapping, I say let X, uh, we map the experience to the X axis, then we have map uh, wages uh, to the Y axis. So when we do this, uh, we are going to get uh, this, uh, we are going to get this gray background. We are going to see uh, that actually X axis, we have mapped the experience. Uh, we also map wage uh, to the Y axis, but uh, there is no geometry. There is, we have not rendered the geometry because we need to pass in a new layer for the geom, which is going to tell the ggplot2 that I want you to take all these variables that have been mapped to X and Y axis. I want you to render it this way. So the next layer is going to be the geometry. Ge this geometry simply refers to how do we want to render this variable in which we have mapped to aesthetics? How do we want to render? How do we want to render it? If we want to render it with a point scatter plot, we are going to use geom underscore points. So when we want to a line graph, we are going to use a geom underscore line. When we want a bar plot, either we can use the geom underscore call or the geom underscore bar. So in this example, yeah, I am still using the ggplot uh, function. So we're passing the data. We do my, I do my aesthetic mapping here. I add a new layer, which is, which is added with a plus sign. And then I pass in uh, the geom underscore point. So when I pass the geom underscore point, it simply shows us uh, the, this scatter plot, which shows that the x axis, uh, we have experience. Uh, we, the y axis, we have the wage, but in this case, we have one data point that falls far away from others. Uh, we can treat uh, this uh, data point uh, as an outlier. So, so in that case, I still I load my dplyr package, then I, hold, I remove that data point by using this function where I say filter wage that is less than 40. So keep all the wage that is less than 40, then I save this in a new variable called plot data. Then I redraw the scatter plots, ggplot data is plot data, then my aesthetic mapping, then I add a new layer, which is a uh, job point. So when I do that job point, uh, we, we, I now have uh, this uh, visualization, which shows that the more experience uh, the people gain, the more the wage in which they, will, they are going to earn. So we can also make the points, uh, we can also make all the points in the data set to be blue. In that case, we need to remove, we need to move the color out. We need to move the color out of the AES function, the aesthetic mapping. So when we do that, we can color all the points to be corn, to be, uh, on flower blue using this function, then we use alpha, which help us uh, to control the transparency of the points. We, we can set it to 0.7 and the size, we can set it to three, which controls uh, the, the, size, uh, the size of the points. So when we run that, uh, we, have, we, have this, uh, we have this scatter plot, which is part of the example in which uh, they explain in the book. So we can also add a line of best fit. So how do we do that? We just need to add a new layer to this plot, uh, which is a uh, jump smooth. And then this method, we can either be a linear model, we can also use uh, the generalized additive model or the generalized linear model. So in this case, we are using uh, the linear model and this shows a uh, positive relationship. We can also see uh, the, the 95% uh, confidence interval. I think that is that. I don't know if there are any, please uh, comment. So please feel free to stop me at any point that is not clear so that I can come back to it. Hello, can I proceed? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Thank yes. you. <laughs> Okay, so the next part uh, is about uh, the statistics uh, layer. So the statistic layer, the, the statistic layer allows us to plot 
statistical values calculated from the data is, is used to transform the input variable to display uh, values. So, uh, so for example, for example, we have uh, TJ plots. Uh, we have this is our data. Then we do our mapping. Then we had a, a new line for which is going to put a point, which is uh, the jump point. We had a new layer, which is uh, the jump uh, underscore smooth. We specify the method, still linear model, standard error. We, we set it to be false. The size, the size of the confidence uh, interval, which is going to be 1.5. So if we do this, it's just going to put this uh, line of uh, line of best fits. This shows uh, that of uh, both sex, female, and male. But uh, but looking at uh, this API in ggplot2 is that every every geometry always comes uh, with a default uh, statistics. Just for example, the histogram, geom underscore histogram, uh, we all know that the default uh, statistics in which geom histogram is using is always stats bin. So it's just going to calculate the bin and it's going to, going to use that uh, to, to visualize. So why uh, geom bar also uses stats bin? But it, is, it uses start being and also start counts. Either it uses start counts. The job uses uh, start being and also we also use start counts. I think why job frequency polygon uses the same statistics. Uh, the job smooth uses uh, start smooth, which is uh, the default statistics. So, but all these statistics, uh, we can overwrite it. Why do box plot for drawing box plot uses start underscore box plot? Why do dot plot using start dot plot start bin dot? Why do bin two d uses start bin two d? Why uh, the job count uses start sum? So these are just basically uh, the default uh, statistical layer. But let's take, for example, that we want to visualize a bar plot. And in this bar plot, we have a cut, which is which are categorical variable. We can map that uh, to the to the x-axis in our visualization. And uh, we have the count, which we can map that uh, to the y-axis. So what ggplot2 uses is that it's going to use the count, the counts. It's just going to use uh, the default statistics, which is start, which is start, uh, start count. So it's going to for fair. It's going to check how many fair, which is one thousand six, one thousand six hundred and ten. So it's just going to count all the value that is that are fair, all the values that are that are good, all the values that are very good, all the values that fall in premium and also ideal. So it's just going to do that count using these statistics called stats underscore count. It's just going to do uh, the counting and go it's going to plot the counts in the y-axis. But if we are using Jumba, there are some instances in which also in my, when I'm creating some visualization at, at times, is uh, I want to map values that are, can be found in the data to the both the x and the y axis, then I will now make a mistake to use your call, John Bar. I mean, when I use John Bar, it's going to return an error because the default statistics for John Bar is start count. But unless we are able to override that default statistics using start identity, so when we use start identity, we are going to override that statistics in that case we are going to be able uh, to draw a visualization. So in the next uh, part, uh, we are going to look at the, the coordinate uh, layer. The coordinate layer allows us to adjust both the X and the Y and the Y coordinate. So we, we are going to make this adjustment because it controls all these graphics in which we are trying to create. 
how these graphics they are going to appear in the paper format. So this is being controlled uh, by the coordinates. So what uh, the coordinates does is that we can adjust the minimum and maximum values as well as uh, the major ticks. So uh, as well as the major ticks mark in our data set, we can adjust it uh, within uh, the coordinates. So here we are using ggplot2 function again. Then we are, we are passing in the data. Then here we have uh, the, aesthetic, the aesthetic mapping where we say X, we map the experience, Y, we map the wage, then the color, we use the sex. So we add a new layer for, for job points. Then we set alpha, which is 0.6, which helps us to control uh, the, the transparency uh, in our visualization. Then we use it, we are using jump underscore smooth function. So within the jump smooth function, uh, we say method should be linear model. Then we set the standard error to be false. So for the coordinates, so the code underscore Cartesian, the code underscore Cartesian, we can use this function to zoom in to the plot without dropping any data points. Because if you are using scale, uh, scale X continuous or scale Y continuous, and we specify the limits uh, there, there, in that case, we have some issues in our visualization because we might drop some data points that are far below the range in which we specify. So for us to avoid that from happening, it's better we use uh, when we want to zoom in to a specific area of our uh, visualization by retaining all the data points without dropping any data points. So it's always good uh, we use this code underscore Cartesian. So in this case, I specify the X limit, which start from zero to 60, then the Y limit, which is from zero uh, to 30. So uh, when we do that, uh, we just have a visualization. So in this case, we are retaining all the data point. We are just zooming in into specific uh, area of interest uh, in our visualization. Uh, I think uh, that is what we got from here. I don't know if, uh, Lydia, I don't know if there are any comments before I proceed into the next part. Um, I had some about the last part. It was um, to 2.5 when you were doing that one. Yes. Yeah, Thank you. it was just, yeah. So I noticed, um, yeah, because there was a difference between when they're like the points, um, like the color change and like the difference of having color within geom point versus having it within the aesthetic. And like that was just something interesting. Yeah. Yes. And then what you were mentioning about stat identity, that one has always been confusing for me. But I think so basically we're saying when you um put stat equal to identity, it overrides like the underlying fact that like something like um, geom bar is by stat bin and it overrides like the regular mapping it would use for X and Y. That that was kind of what you were saying? Yes, I think given me when I started working with ggplot2 at times, I make uh, that error also where I will map variables to both X and the Y axis at times I make mistake uh, without over thinking of over overwriting the default statistics, I'll just say to your bar, then I'll get that error, then I'll now go back to my code and I'll now update that. Or I'll just switch to your call, which will understand how to render the data properly for me. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, because I had learned about Jim call like, uh, yeah, after Jim bar, and then I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's cool. Okay, so let's proceed. Okay, so in the book, they were talking about uh, this grouping. So uh, in addition to, my, they said in addition to mapping variables to the X, both the X and Y axis variables can be mapped to the color, to the shape, to the size, and also to, to transparency. So we can pick any variable that we can get from the data, we can map it into any of these uh, properties uh, to, to 
we can map it into all, all these properties. So what this variable is going to be, all these variable, they are going to be scaled down. They are going to be scaled using the scale function. Then it's going to, the ggplot2 is just going to draw legend. It's going to draw legend for all these variables uh, in which we are trying to map. This allows groups of observations to be superimposed in a single graph. It, it can also let us add sex to the plot and represent it by color. So let's see how we do that. We are still using the ggplot2 fun functions, passing data is equals to what plot on the plot data. Then within mapping, we map x to experience, y to wage. Then we color by sex, so it's going to be male or female. Then we're having jump points, alpha, which help us to control uh, the transparency, 0.7. Then size is equals to three. Plus, uh, we are adding this new layer, which is jump smooth, which is going to draw uh, the line of best fits, which shows uh, this. And it appears that men tend to make more money that men tend uh, to make more money than women. <laughs> Additionally, there may be a stronger relationship between experience and wages for men than for women, uh, which is uh, what uh, the, our visualization is saying. So for the next part, uh, uh, for the next part is talk about scales. So scales control how variables are mapped to the visual characteristics of the plots. Scale function, which starts with scale underscore, allow us to modify this mapping. For example, we can map MPG to the x-axis because MPG is a continuous variable. We can map the weight to the y-axis, which is, uh, we can also map a color to the cylinder. So what ggplot2 does is that all these variables in which we are mapping uh, to the visual properties of the, our plot, ggplot2 is going to what? Scale these the variables down for us. After the scaling, so what is going to happen? It's going to draw the legend for us, which is going to guide us in reading the visualization in which we have created. Just like the x axis, we have MPG, which is uh, a numeric variable, which is continuous. So the scaling there is going to be scale underscore x underscore continuous. Then in that case, that function is going to be used to scale uh, the data in the x-axis. Then for, for the weights, we are going to use the scale underscore y underscore continuous to scale that value down. Then for the color, for the color we have cylinder eight, six, and four, these are values. So what ggplot2 is going to do is that it's going to what scale this data, these values down. It's going to scale it down and transform it into the variable values in which the uh, the the graphics can understand. And it's going to map put place the colors there. It's going to, when we have eight cylinder, we know it is green. Then it's, when we have six cylinder, we know it's going to be blue. When we have four cylinders, uh, we know let it be red. So it's going to map it there, put the key there, and also the guide for us uh, to read our plot. So for example, we have uh, we have our ggplot2 function. So we pass in our aesthetic mapping. Then we pass in our geometry, which is geom points, to add a scatter plot. We also have add the jump, uh, jump smooth, which is going to put the uh, line of best fits. So we have scale underscore x underscore continuous. So, so within the scale underscore x underscore continuous, we specify the breaks. So within the breaks, we are using this seek function. We put the stats beginning, we put the ending, we put the number of breaks, which will be from 10, 20, 30, until we get uh, to 60. So we also specify uh, the scale Y continuous. So we also specify the breaks. Then we put the label using the scales function that is coming from the scales package. Then we are using the dollar symbol for the Y axis. Then 
for the color, we use scale color manual. Then with values, we, we, we create a character vectors of the two color uh, that we are trying to use, which is Indian red three, corn flower blue. Then when we render that, uh, we are going to have uh, this nice uh, looking uh, visuals, just as they explain uh, in the book. So we have experience, we have wage, which is from zero to around $25. Okay. So, so the next part, which they also, we also, we also cover in the book is facets. So the facets, the layer allows us to create subplots within the same graphic object. So just like we have a data graphics, but we want to split it into small multiples. So in that case, it's good we use the facets function. And there are two different type of facets, which we can have maybe the facets underscore grid and all the facets underscore wrap function, which is coming uh, from the ggplot2 uh, package. So in this case, uh, we are still using our graphics that we produced uh, earlier on for the only code on which we are adding to this uh, graphics. We, we are just adding a new layer, which is uh, the facet underscore wrap. We are wrap using tilde sector. So it's going to split this data set by the different sector, which this is for clerical, this is for construction, management, manufacturing, order, professor, sales, services. So these are, these are all uh, the sector. And it appears that the difference between men and women depends on job sector uh, under, under consideration. So the, the, different, the difference, it depends on the different job sector. We can see management. In management, we can see that we have more men performing better. Uh, in const but, uh, we saw a, a more pattern here in constructions that we have. We do not have any female that can be found there uh, in construction. So the next uh, parts in which they also discuss in the book is about labels. How to how to label uh, our plots. So this is very useful because this is going to guide the users. The users there will be reading our plots so that they will understand uh, how, to, how to read the plots. So like in this case, we can put the labels, we can use it, use, we can add the label to any visualization using this labs function that is coming from the ggplot2 package. So within the labs, we specify the title, which is uh, we wrote the relationship between wages and experience, we specify the subtitle within the within quotes, current population survey. Then we put the captions. We specify the source of the data set. Then we say the X, which is years of experience. Y axis, which is hourly wage. Then we color it uh, by the gender. So when we add the, uh, the labels, so it helps uh, our audience to easily read the plot because the main idea for uh, any visualization in which uh, we are creating is that uh, it must be able to stand alone. It must be clear to all the audience. It must be self-explanatory because you don't need, you, you just need to send me the visuals. I just need to go through the visuals. Once I see that every, of every part of the visual, every important part, it is self-explanatory, then I'll be able to, I'll be able to understand uh, what uh, message in which you are trying to pass uh, using uh, your visual now. Okay. So I don't know if there are any comments before I proceed to the next part. Not right now. Okay. Okay, so this, uh, I think uh, the teams, uh, I think this one does not, uh, the teams, the teams, the teams layer refers to all non-data ink. So this one does not, doesn't have any uh, link to the data. It refers to the non-data. We use the teams uh, to improve the look, to improve the, uh, the appearance of our 
that are visualization in which we are creating. Finally, we can fine tune the appearance of the graph using the team. So we can use it, the team. In this case, we just add uh, the team minimal, which is going to pass in the minimal team uh, into this visualization. We can also, within the team, we can customize all the, we can customize, we can modify the title, we can modify the legend, we can modify the any variable from the X axis, from the Y axis. So there are, there are a lot of, uh, a lot in which we can do within the team. We can, anything that is not related to the data, we can, we can modify it within the team function uh, in ggplot2. So the second to the last part, he said placing the data and mapping options. So how do we do this? So placing the data and mapping option. So this, we are still using both the data and the aesthetic mapping. So we only add a new layer for the geometry. We also add a smoothing function. So in this case, uh, we are using uh, the polymo we are using the poly polynomial. So when we use this, so it shows uh, a different pattern when we use uh, the polynomial. But when we switch, when we switch, uh, when we switch by removing color from the from the when we we are using you are using ggplot2 we do our aesthetic mapping another aesthetic mapping what we did here is that we uh we said jump points color is equals to sex so we are mapping color to the points so when we map color to the points we're also controlling the alpha and also the size of the points so within jump smooth, we are not mapping anything to the jump smooth. So in that case, we are just going to have just one line for the confidence interval because we said that uh, we, we need color, let's apply color to only the sex variable within jump point. So ggplot2 understand that and is going to render that because the ordering of arrangement of our layers, it really matters in ggplot2. So the, the way we order arrange our layer using those plus signs, so that is how ggplot2 uh, is going to render our visualization. Though it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of practice in order for you to master all the own layers that are uh, in GG, ggplot2. Since the sex to color mapping only appears only in the jump point function, it is only used there. A single trend line is created for all the observations because this is what we did. We remove, we remove this color that was mapped to the initial ggplot2 function in the AES function. We create another, a new, another AES function here. Then we select color be sex. So since we map this to the only the jump points, so we are going to use it only for this layer and it is not applied to this layer, but when we map color is equals to sex uh, to the jump smooth uh, uh, function using the AES uh, command, then in that case, we are going to only apply that to only the jump smooth and it's not going to be applied uh, to the jump point. So ordering really matters uh, in ggplot2. So graphs as objects, so, but we can also, save our graph as an object. So what do we do here? We just create an object called my plot, where we do the same thing. We run the same uh, command in which I did earlier on. So for me to print the graph, I just need to call my plots, which is going to render uh, the plots. We can also do my plot plus your points. Size is three, color is blue. When we say color is blue, because here, we are specifying the color outside the AES uh, function. So it's going to color, it's going to look that there is, we are not linking it to any variable from the data. So it's going to just scale it down and color all the points blue. When we call the my plot, so it's just going to color 
all the plots uh, to be blue. So in this case, we are having my plots plus jump smooths uh, method should be linear model plus we have the labs. Then we say title, which is mainly interesting uh, graph. So when we look at that, which we, we have this uh, visualization, we can also have my plot plus team black and white. So this just going to give us uh, this. Uh, I think uh, the last part, I, I added uh, some extension, some resources, which is, this is for the ggplot2 book, uh, the ggplot2 cheat sheets, our graph gallery, our graphic cookbook, and ggplot2 extension gallery, because uh, for you to really understand ggplot2, there are a lot of resources, which uh, you need, uh, we need to consult, especially the cheat sheets. It's an important uh, document in which we need to go in depth, look at the cheat sheets because, and also the, and some other good books, which is like the ggplot2 book, the R graphics cookbook, and also the ggplot2 extension gallery. If you want to extend, want to further learn how you can, if you have master ggplot2, how you can use other extension packages that add more jumps to the ggplot2. Uh, package. So that is when you need to start looking at the ggplot2 uh, extension uh, gallery. I think that is all I have for this introductory part uh, to ggplot2. The next is just uh, the resources. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fami. And yeah, so this was chapter two of Data Visualization with R by Ra Robert Kav Kavakov, I believe. Um, but yeah, that was great. Thank you so much for the presentation, Femi. Um, and thanks for joining Tiffany. Um, and to tell me, well, thanks for you to tell me I saw um, yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, does anyone yeah. else, does anyone have any questions about the presentation or comments? No, this will be recorded, right? Just yeah, so that I, recorded. okay, good. Just like yeah, the other so one. The, I'm going to listen yeah. to it again. Yeah, and John will post the link, the YouTube link later on. But yeah, okay, cool. this, yeah, I really liked this presentation and this chapter. Um, yeah. It was interesting, especially like adding the color, um, like when you add the color within the geom instead of within the aesthetic. And I'm curious, I think I'm going to go back later and see about adding the color within like the smoother, like geom smooth versus like in the point, because that like, seems very interesting. So like you would have like, say, yeah, I think for the next one. So like if you have, or it might be a different one. So you would put the, within gym point, the color ended up, you put in the aesthetic with color sex, I believe. And then, yeah, so it's this one. So it didn't affect the smooth, but then potentially you could put the AES color is equal to sex within the gym smooth. And then, so it won't affect the points, but then you'll have smoothers for each sex based on color. I'm assuming that's what would happen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I want to go around, go play with ggplot2 a bit more. Like, yeah. Same. Same. It's really good. I think that also, I think there is a new cohort that is starting this week on ggplot2. I think it's also good. We also participate in that cohort also. Yeah, I highly recommend that book. That was like the first book club I joined. And yeah, that got me like really excited about Dataverse. So yeah, if you guys have really? time in your schedule. Yeah, you if you have time in your schedule. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, and yeah. all those resources, thanks for, giving those resources, they're all great. Like I've seen the R graph gallery and or ggplot2 gallery and the extension gallery. Yeah. Those are super cool. Yeah. Yes, yes. Should I post them in the chat or once I push the book, you they, you can all get the updated notes once I push. Oh, you can put my... them in the chat too. Yeah, that'll work. Because then it'll, okay. it'll be on the um the slack as well okay but, but yeah so for next week let me see what the chapter is called okay. yeah 
So next week, we'll be doing chapter three, which is univariate graphs. Um, I don't know, Tiffany, if you want to do univariate graphs, or um, we could talk offline about it, whoever wants to do it. Otherwise, I don't mind doing it. Um, I'll put the sign up sheet in the chat as well. Um, okay. Yeah, so this is the sign up sheet for if anyone wants to volunteer, volunteer to do any of the upcoming chapters. Yeah, so our next chapter, chapter three, univariate graphs. So yeah. There you go. So yeah, once again, thank you, Femi, for the presentation today. Um, thank you all for joining and see you all next week. Okay, thank you. See you next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.